Well, let's start at the top. Let's talk about Caleb Williams because I, I got to tell you, for me, I decided Caleb Williams was the number one pick in this draft. I think probably when he went into the Texas game as a freshman and saved Oklahoma's bacon, but I was positive. <laughs> Damn sure he was the number one pick in this draft during the Kansas game. That remember the play where the he ball. throws it to the guy, he runs to like steals the ball back from him, Ridiculous. and is like, yeah. "I'll take." <laughs> like nobody has those instincts or that improv. Like, and it, I think it ended up being a terrible play. <laughs> he might have fumbled or something, but but when he <laughs> when he did it, I was like, "Oh God, this guy's so different." Yeah, yeah, I. Um... I think from so that was a, it was a really interesting quarterback cycle that year. A lot of guys committed early. Um, it, we can kind of circle back on this. When we're talking about like JJ McCarthy because mm -hmm. Drake May. Yeah. Um, but, but I remember, you know, watching. We had just finished our 2020 ranking. I was at 24 seven at the time, and we had just finished our 2020 ranking. I was kind of starting to do like a deep dive on the 2021 quarterbacks. It was like a Saturday in you know February, and you know, didn't have anything to do. And so I just watched a bunch of Caleb Williams. But I came out, I was like, this guy's like clearly the best quarterback. I mean, it's just in terms of this, the, 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 the horsepower he had in his arm, uh, his movement skills. I think in like, if you just want, were to watch his highlights now, I was like, when I was doing this, I was watching full games and it was like, mm. it translated to the game as well. But like, I think in like a three and a half minute highlight, he broke like 25 tackles. I mean, he was extremely <laughs> difficult to tackle, awesome contact balance. And then just the ability to make throws from every platform. Uh, a lot of the throws that we we saw him make at USC, like the, the rolling out throws that kind of went viral where he was throwing across his body, he was doing that in high school, like the exact same throws. So everything he was doing was just highly translatable. And I think there was an inclination for people to look at his stats and kind of ding him a little bit. But when, when you watch the film, you would see that there were no layups in, in their offense in, in high school. He was playing against really good competition. And I think it, when you watched it in the context of a game, I just came away every time thinking this guy's like uber talented. And it was a deal where, you know, I, I just, I thought he was clearly the top quarterback talent in, in the cycle. And um, even when like Quinn Ewers reclassified, like that to me just wasn't a question. I still would t take Caleb Williams mm -hmm. over him uh, in terms of, especially after I saw Quinn physically, um, it just, just a different level. And uh, and just just so much potential and, and ability, and I, it, it's interesting. Like we would always kind of debate on like what what his comp was in high school, and it's kind of it's you know a lot of people said Mahomes, and people said Russell Wilson, and I, you've kind of seen that come back around on Aaron Rodgers, and I think that's a really good one. But he certainly is that level of um, of, of of talent, and uh, I, I just think like it's it's there's not a lot of guys that have come through high school football uh, the last several cycles that have the combination of like arm talent ability to play inside structure, which he really did more in high school than college. Like he was under center a good bit in high school um, mm -hmm. and, and then improvisational plays too. Yeah, dude, Charles, I remember when we basically went back and we kind of do little projects, right? Where you go back and watch tape because we haven't watched Caleb, or at least I haven't watched Caleb since I was at Baylor in 21. Basically, I hadn't watched Caleb Williams. It takes about four plays before you got to pick your jaw back off the floor. I mean, he's got serious wow plays. It's probably four or five clips in. And so when I watched, I went four or five clips in. And I remember being like, God, I think LSU almost had him at one point. So I called one of my buddies at LSU that was there at the time. And he was like, oh, we were in it. Like we after the, because you got to remember, LSU was coming off a national championship 2019 because most of these quarterbacks, like Charles mentioned, they declare, they commit that season prior before their season year as juniors. And so I called him up and I was like, dude, what happened? Like, how did y'all choke this? Like, what happened? And he was like, Joe Brady left. That's the same set, that same cycle where Joe Brady, the offensive coordinator, left January of 2020 to be the OC um, for the Carolina Panthers and Matt Rule. Lincoln Riley swoops in that summer. They get him committed, done deal, case closed. And, and that's how right. fast things can happen at that level. Brock Vandergriff was at Oklahoma and he flipped oh, that's to, right. to open up the spot for Caleb Williams. So that's Caleb, you're Williams, so right. three, Caleb Williams top three was like, OU, which he basically like the story is he kind of recruited himself to Lincoln Riley. Um, I think he was maybe talking to Lincoln Riley, even while Brock was committed Crazy. and then yeah. LSU in Maryland. So there's yeah. just like a bunch of sliding doors there. <laughs> Can you imagine 
Well, okay, Let, let's ask this question. Like, since Cody opened the door, the sliding door here. Apology. Is Ed Orgeron <laughs> still the coach at LSU Ugh. if Caleb Williams goes to LSU? Guys, even more important, is Cody Belair still at LSU or is he at <laughs> on three? No one knows at this point. But yeah, I mean, that would be crazy. I mean, I will say at that time, th we felt like the writing was on the wall. But I mean, to your point, if Caleb Williams there, do, is that a team that instead of going seven and five goes, I don't know, 10 and two? And we're still yeah. there. It's it's a great question, Andy. I don't know. Oh my God. That is that is wild. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on three. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On Three Sports YouTube channel.